All right, Britt, let's kick things off uh, here. Uh, I just want to start by saying congratulations on getting this film made. It was great to watch. Um, you've stated that paint, paint took you 13 years to get made. Uh, that's an incredible commitment. Uh, take, <laughs> <laughs> incredible commitment to the craft. Uh, take me back to just the light bulb moment, you know, years ago when you thought of this and crafting the overall premise of the movie. Um, so, uh, basically as a, as a kid, we weren't, we weren't allowed to watch TV. Um, uh, and so my mom and my sister would watch general hospital and, uh, which meant I watched general hospital, which means I know a tremendous amount about general hospital from the eighties. So if there's anything you need to know about the ice princess or Robert Scorpio or Luke or lower, I'm your guy. Um, but so, uh, when that show would end, uh, we were so cheap, uh, and I'm also of the age where we didn't uh, have a remote control. So uh, I would sit in front of the TV, and there was a dial on top of the TV. And the whole goal at that age was to just keep that TV on. And so uh, you would turn the knob on the, on top of the TV, and it was basically like a ticking time bomb with each channel that went you went past, and um, and. And so you would click and just, you know, hope to have, you know, my mom say, you know, not say go do your homework and you would get to Bob Ross and he would be, you know, you'd start by being like, oh, this guy with his whisper and his hair and stuff. And, and then, you know, he would, there'd be a brown brush stroke and that brush stroke would turn into a branch and turn into a tree and the tree would become a forest and the forest would become a mountainscape and you would go from being like who is this guy to just quiet and and you know so immersed in this world and then he would finish the painting you would marvel at it and then the show would end and the world would get loud and you'd have to go do homework <laughs> and so and you would just miss this place that he had taken you and it was it was a truly magical place and um and so I always I always loved those moments and and how what he could do to you and 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 so in thinking about that I always imagined him to be just the best person in the world and from all accounts he was a great great guy um but the idea that I really liked was what if someone who had this power over people didn't use that power for good um and the idea of uh you know the idea of loving the art without loving the artist um, and that combined with an idea of, you know, if you are a rock star, the way Carl Nargol is, who that's uh, Owen's character in the film. And if you've had the number one painting show on PBS in Burlington, Vermont, since you were 22 years old, would you ever grow beyond who you were at 22 years old? And if the world changed, would you be able to change with it? Or would you get trapped in that, in that, uh, would that past be your present? And, um, and what would that mean to you if the, you know, effectively the world's passing you by? So, um, uh, you know, that's the, uh, that's the Genesis, the Exodus, Leviticus, and a little bit yeah. of Deuteronomy. Oh, Deuteronomy? Man, I haven't said that in a long time. <laughs> Let's get to the New Testament. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> good one, good one. Um, well, I just want to ask you about the um, decision, um, excuse me, the decision-making process for the film's visual style and, uh, I thought some of the music cues in this movie were great. Like what, what kind of, what did you bring to the table or your cinematographer even with crafting the overall look of the movie? So um, Patrick Cady um, is a cinematographer. And so he's my, he's an old, he's an old, old friend. Like he shot, he and I shot our first things together. We did a documentary together called Trivia Town. So he's off being a fancy director for JJ Abrams right now. Um, but I tricked him into working on this. Um, so it's just an absolute gift to have him involved. And so we shot the film in 20 days and, um, which is really, really tight. And we shot it during COVID, which, which is, you know, just, is just a real yeah. money suck. Um, it just makes things harder. So what we really try to do was, um, the Carl Nargle character is really trapped in the past. And so, um, along with Todd Jeffrey, the production designer, and Ali Pierce, who did uh, costume design, we really tried to keep him in the past. Uh, there's never been a reason for him to change. So everything around him hasn't changed. His van, his CB, his uh, pants, um, his whole look. So 
we really tried to have a timelessness to the film uh, that sort of resonates from him not needing to change. Vermont's also a state that doesn't really change that much. So setting it in Vermont also sort of um, um, was part of that world. Uh, in terms of the in terms of visual look, you know, aside from it being really trapped in the past, we we really look to rip off uh, the Coen brothers as much as possible, um, and also Wes Anderson. So with with Wes really fought for symmetry anytime we could get it, um, which is hard to do when you're sort of moving pretty quickly. Uh, I think at our best, we're at Wes Anderson's uh, lower grade <laughs> shots. But, uh, <laughs> and then, um, uh, I mean, look, every every shot that Wes shoots is just, I mean, I gasp when I watch his movies. They're so, they're so beautiful. And then the other thing we really try to do is in terms of um, the Coen brothers, um, uh, we, we we needed to shoot really pretty quickly. And a way we did that was we had clean singles, which means that um, we would just see one person in a shot at a time. <clears throat> and that means that you're, you're it's it's easier to, to cut around other action. So, and we also, we filmed it uh, for the most part with a 27 millimeter and a 32 millimeter lens, but at 27 for the most part, which you can really feel people's hands and stuff. So it's a little bit more comedic. Um, yeah. And the Coen brothers do a lot of that. So we really stuck to one lens, the 27, which we called the Nargle uh, while shooting. Um, so, you know, we try to rip off the best uh, and that was, uh, and, and keep Carl in sort of a, in, in, in a timeless place. Okay. I, I do want to ask you in terms of production design or props, even uh, the van. Like, did, was this molded by like the production team or did you find this in, somewhere in prep and just picked it up and put it in the movie? I was just so intrigued by how cool that van was. Yeah, fantastic. No, fantastic, uh, which I own now. It's, it's, it's sitting in a barn in Rutland, Vermont. It is uh, registered and properly plated and everything else. So uh, no, the van, uh, we really searched for that van and we only got it to set about two days before. So it's, it's, uh, there's a wrap. So Todd Jeffrey, the production designer, um, we had an artist uh, do the whole painting for the, for the, you know, the mountainscape on it of Mount Mansfield. And so that came together. Uh, it came together really last minute. We got like, it was amazing how it was in New York. We were shooting in upstate New York hours away. And it was like the day before, and it was still getting wrapped in like downtown, like Brooklyn. So um that was amazing how it came together. And then the whole inside, there's a, uh, a sofa bed, a custom sofa bed. And so that was, uh, that was built. Um, uh, parts of that, well, parts of it were built and, and to fit in there. And so it's uh, Todd Jeffrey is, is just a genius designer. So, you know, that was, uh, that was just incredible work on his part. Okay. Um, I have to ask about Owen Wilson. Uh, what made you think he was right for the fit in this lead, in the lead role? Man, what would be wrong about him in this role? I mean, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's just such a gift. It's like, you know, in terms of um, he's someone who's been, you know, a star for such a long uh, period of time. So in a lot of ways, his his understanding of the character um, uh, really mirrors a lot of what Carl Nargle has been through, where... You know, he's seen people be stars at early ages and seen them maybe not evolve. So the script, I think, really spoke to him that way. Um, his dad uh, ran a PBS station in Dallas, Texas. His mom is an artist. He's an art collector. He's a really funny guy um, who's a great actor who um, is also an Oscar-nominated an Oscar writer. So, you know, that's a sextuple threat, I think, is is, you know, how deep we're going. So... You know, it really, I think the script really resonated for him in a lot of ways and the world did. Um, and he and I are the same age. So a lot, we have a very, like, we have a shorthand in terms of sense of humor and understanding and our perspective on the world. So, you know, for him, for all of, all of those things lined up uh, for him to do it and then for him to actually step out. Uh, I, I mean, talking about, you know, the cinematographer, Patrick Katie and I, when, when Owen, I'd spent, you know, months talking to about it and stuff and spending time with, but when he stepped in front of that lens, you know, as Carl Nargle, you know, I, it was one of those, you know, we said, holy cow to each other and then just sort of realized it was going to work, um, which was a remarkable moment. So, you know, having Owen on board for this has just been amazing every step of the way, because he's also a really good guy. So that's super helpful in this type of movie. 
I can't talk about the cast without talking about the great ensemble you got for all the women in the film. Uh, just talk about um, putting that team together of characters as well. Well, so, um, uh, I mean, Michaela, Michaela Watkins, you know, we we're just so lucky to get. Um, she comedically has, you know, the, has such good chops and she's also a writer and really smart and she's from uh you know from the east coast and wanted to play the movie small and really grounded which i think makes it that much funnier everything she goes through so um she was an absolute get and then uh wendy mcclendon covey is you know a, a comedic icon so that she would you know take time off from being the star of gigantic shows and doing other stuff to do our film and to kill every scene, you know, and to, she's, it's really fun. I can, she's the one who really gets Michaela to break in places. So, um, she sort of got Michaela's number, um, which is really fun. Um, but you know, just an absolute gift comedically, uh, Sierra Renee is a Broadway star who I didn't know before, but she's, you know, between Wicked and Waitress and Frozen and stuff. She's, you know, she's headlined huge Broadway productions and she's, uh, just an absolute monster when it comes to, as a performer and even just something as simple as like, we messed up one day and didn't give her an entire page of dialogue. It was separate dialogue. And she memorized an entire page of dialogue in about five minutes. Like that could have shut down the whole day of shooting basically. And she was like, okay. And uh, it was one of the most, one of the most remarkable things I've ever seen uh, just from a pure brain power perspective. So she is, uh, I mean, she's so incredibly skilled. Um, uh, Lucia, Lucia Struess has been on like Adam Sandler movies and she's sort of this chameleon who when you realize all the things she's been in she is uh, she can really she really <laughs> pops through a lot of scenes like she is uh, she's the most forward of our characters and I think uh, uh, it's amazing to watch what she can do to a crowd like watching this play in front of a crowd people erupt with her and then the and then Lucy Freyer who's um straight out of Juilliard and this is her first uh big project and she's going to be an absolute star she is just so good and she is uh you know I think she's about two weeks away from never talking to me again because she's going to be such a gigantic star she's just she's great so yeah just such such an such a great cast and just so lucky to have all of them okay uh last question if I got time yeah, yeah. oh I don't know yeah um so uh, Paint's a very funny film, but uh, it seems to have a lot of uh, serious messages to it. Uh, you know, what do you think are those messages and, you know, are these messages and themes or subjects, do they always interest you as a filmmaker? Um, I think anytime you can, you can, if you could move a story forward and have a perspective and also tell a joke, you're, you're doing something right. So um you know, that's the goal in, in scenes. Um, <clears throat> the, the overall idea is basically if you're, if you're always trying to paint the perfect picture, you're going to miss the best parts of life. And so, you know, for, for Owen's character, he, that's what he's been trying to do his whole life is, is really be this uh, persona as a, as a, uh, more so than a person. And so I think for me, that's a lot of our world today is, is really trying to paint a perfect picture of who you are. It's an Instagram filter. It's, you know, it's everything is trying to be a better version of yourself. And just this idea that you should, you know, accept yourself for who you are and the people around you for who they are and 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 love people for all of the flaws that make them interesting. And it's just a happier life if you can do that. So that's that's the that's the basic idea is, is sort of, you know, happiness uh lies in the in the frayed edges of life. 